Today we are doing ball joints and tie rod ends on a 1998 GS300 tie rod end ball joint. Uh, these are Sanke 555. These are, seem to be pretty uh pretty well regarded by the Lexus community. So um, I already did the other side uh, just to you know, get that out of the way. So we'll be working on the passenger side this time. So um, just briefly going over uh, everything needed. So obviously ball joint, tie rod end. Um, tools, your mileage may vary. Uh, three pound sledge over here, ball joint popper or ball joint tool and um, you may require a crescent wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, a 17 millimeter wrench, a 19 millimeter wrench, a breaker bar extension, and a uh, ratchet. Uh, additionally, a uh, 24 millimeter socket, that's for uh, my ball joint tool. Your mileage may vary. Uh, 20, or sorry, that was a 24. 21 millimeter for the uh, ball joint nut, a uh, 19 millimeter socket, and a 17 millimeter socket. So, uh, first thing you want to do is uh, cut the wheel all the way to the left to give you more access back here. Um, just makes it a bit easier. Uh, oh, also, I forgot to mention. Um, uh, channel locks or locking pliers and I use some needle uh, needle nose pliers these are for uh, snap rings uh, and potentially a light just to make it easier to see the lighting in here isn't the best but um yeah so we'll just get right into it first thing I'm gonna be doing is hopefully hopefully I can brighten it up after when I'm editing but first thing I want to do is get the uh, cotter pin straightened out so I can pull it back through back through that nut hoping you can sort of see what I'm doing here but Pretty straightforward, just um just you know get the cotter pin out. Uh you can sort of use once you've gotten the gotten it straightened out, you can sort of tap it with a hammer. Try to force the cotter pin out the other side. And just hope you don't bend the cotter pin like I did. Just now. And worst case scenario, I may just, you know, end up breaking the cotter pin, but that's fine. We just need it out of the way. So getting up underneath from behind, might be able to grab onto it with these pliers and pull it out. Maybe, maybe not. <sighs> but like I said, worst case scenario, I might just break the cotter pin if need be. Gotta kind of manhandle it out. Get this sledge here. Alright, 
so it's bending but at least it's backing out a little bit all right that's working out Locking pliers might also come in handy for this. That's what I'm gonna grab here. Also, I apologize for the honking in the background. It appears my neighbors are having some issues issues with their uh, car alarm. that may persist for a portion of the video. So I do apologize for that. It has been going on all day. And it is quite annoying. Come on. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll come from this side and try to push it through instead of pulling through. Might actually hit him with a combo move right here. Using my uh, pliers, maybe my channel locks. locking pliers and just sort of tap them tap it through Trying to see if I can get on the back side here and pull it through again. There we go. So, cotter pin out. That's trash. So, um, that's out of the way. Might as well get the ball joint cotter pin out as well there we go just take that straighten that out take the other arm straighten that out sort of squeeze them together and just push it through and pull it through This one I might end up needing to break it off because the dust shield here might make it a bit difficult to get it pried out. Maybe. Maybe not. There we go. Other cotter pin out. That's trash. All right, so. Now what I want to do is the tie rod arm locking nut, the outer tie rod end locking nut. I want to break that loose, I believe 17 mil, maybe, nope. So 19 mil for that, 
and since I'm working from below it essentially I want to make sure I'm turning the right way so I want to go since I'm you know above it I actually want to go clockwise and there we go just like that so it's broken loose back it off a couple turns so there's no friction between that and the outer tie rod end itself. There we go. All right, and then uh, let's see. These tie rod ends can sometimes be different sizes. Uh, that that one that's installed is an 18 so I don't have an 18 millimeter wrench but if you do good on you and uh, I think I've touched on this before I'm, I may use my adjustable wrench or wrenches incorrectly but you know as long as it gets the job done I guess it won't really matter all that much so I just want to break that tie rod and nut loose, just like that. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, beautiful cover drill. Right, let's see if I can get this in frame. I'm working with my GoPro here, so. I wasn't able to get a socket up in there because um the brake caliper. And there you go. And there goes that nut. That nut is trash. And there is your die rod end. Um, so now I can take the ball joint tool sort of get it on there somehow. Might have to go from underneath the car. Uh, just like that. Start tightening this down. It should be relatively easy. The other side was at least. Ugh. All right. And then what I like to do is these, because the loud noises frighten me. Put in my headphones, put in my uh, safety glasses. Then um, you could use the adjustable wrench, but uh, what I'm gonna do is use my breaker bar and the 24 mil socket. I'm just gonna tighten this up to pop the uh, pop it loose. And sometimes you can smack it with a hammer. That'll pop it loose as well. So that's sort of tightening up. I might do that. There we go. 
headphones off, safety glasses. Uh, we'll just say the safety glasses are uh, on. And we are still recording. Alright. So there you go, your tie rod end is loose. And then what you can do so you don't mess up your alignment too bad, count the rotations removing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, it's about 19, about 19 rotations, so when I install the new one, I want to go about 19 rotations on. Set your new cotter pin aside, as well as the new nut. And you'll see why I'm doing this in this order. So that was about 19. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. And just take that locking nut and tighten it back up that was 19 19 millimeter wrench so it's one to spin the whole tie rod so this is where you can take your 14 just to grab the uh, inner tie rod in so you can snug up that nut real quick not want to move but I can do that later it's no big deal and then take your tie rod in install it into the steering knuckle and then just take your castle nut thread it on there ever so slightly and new Castle nut is 19 millimeter for the uh, Sand K555. Just give that a couple turns. Just so it's locked in place. And this will assist you with the uh, ball joint removal. You'll see why here in a sec. Um, so now what we want to do is take our ratchet and extension, throw that on there, and uh, we're looking for the 17 mil. We're going to go under, make sure this is recording still, there we go, and there are two. 17 mil nuts that hold the um, that bolt the ball joint slash steering knuckle to uh, assembly to the spindle. So just break these loose. Hopefully you can see them. There's one right there, one over yonder. So just break these loose. Might not be able to get this in shot all that clear, but. I'll do my best. <sighs> All right, so that one's broke loose. And take the other one. Break that one loose. That one was already pretty loose. And don't mind my stomach. I'm out here shirtless, of course. In the middle of, well, I guess the beginning of February. Here in Florida and it's probably mid 70s it's a beautiful day so 
those two bolts are removed and then now I gotta get the uh, big ball joint one that was what a uh, 19 or 20 21 so here's my 19 19 is too small so yeah that was the 21 millimeter uh so pull that off grab your 21 millimeter socket just go ahead and break that loose that wasn't too bad at all it was probably too loose remove that nut that nut is now a trash and then do what you did earlier ball joint removal tool so get under here to get a good angle uh, loosen this up so that way the jaws open a bit wider Might have been a bit too wide, but we'll see. How can I get at this? So what I'm actually probably gonna have to do here is uh, disconnect the tie rod arm, just so I have easier access in there. I didn't tighten it down all the way, so it'll be really easy to uh, remove. Let's just take your new castle nut, make sure you don't lose that. Move that, let that just drop free. And come back in with my ball joint tool. Try to get it set up in there. Now what I end up having to do usually is take my uh, my three pound sledge, sort of hammer it in place. There we go. And basically the same thing as last time. Um, tighten this down. And then Grab your 24. I'll come back under here. Uh, make sure we're able to see what we're doing. And then get that 24 mil on there. All right, as you can see, we're good to go. So that'll press onto the stud or shank whatever you may call it and it'll squeeze those together and pop it loose <coughs> so uh, back to this again grab my headphones my safety glasses and then swap this out for that 24 mil And then just start tightening it down. Once I can get an angle on it.
So it might actually be easier if I end up using an extension for this. So I'll just grab my 3 8 adapter, my extension. Oh wow. <laughs> so I'll need my half inch extension. Here we go. This might end up being too tall. Nope. Get my glasses back on. There we go. All right, so that popped loose. So now what I like to do take that 24 off and I'll just sort of thread it on to the uh, ball joint tool just to make sure I can get it make just to double check and it's threading in easy so that ball joint is definitely popped loose I can just pull that right on out and now the entire spindle just lift away you can move all that out of the way and boom there's your ball joint you tie it right in and you can just Pop that right on out. Inspect. This one is actually feels pretty good, but it's a GS, and one of the first things you should do to your GS is uh, place those ball joints. So, take our new ball joint. Pull that on out. These do come with a uh, Zerk fitting for re-greasing, which we will probably do at a later point. I just need to get these installed for today. I also uh, might have lost my uh, grease gun, or at least the, uh, the fitting for it. And uh, sorta, of, oh, I got it upside down sort of pop that in there drops in from the top and just stick a uh, retaining nut on it you don't want to go too tight because otherwise you won't really be able to manipulate it all that well and you can sort of pull it back towards you a little bit to make it easier to install on the spindle and just take your old spindle assembly right here and sort of line it up you will not be able to see what I'm doing but what I need to do is these dowel pins right here they match up with where the bolt holes that bolted the uh, spindle assembly match up. So those two holes got to, well these dowel pins got a slot in there. And it's easier if you pull this towards you. Because the spindle will obviously be at a angle. And then lift it up and drop it on and boom. Now, as you can see, it is installed on the dowels. And then I can take 
the bolts, those 17s. Let me get a better angle for you. Move some stuff out of the way. And that bolt will go there. That one will go there. And then find your uh, 17 mil socket. 17, nope, 19, 17, and then ratchet and extension. Get back under there. And just snug those up. I do it by hand. So that one's good. And the other one, which is sort of tucked away, hidden in there. Yeah, you can move the spindle really easily since the uh, tie rod end isn't installed yet. But before you snug these down all the way, you want to reinstall that tie rod end. Otherwise, a lot of this is just going to be wanting to rotate on you. So those are snugged up. Let's go a little bit more. It's going to rotate on you while you're snugging them up until you put that tie rod end on. And then, uh, and then you just pop back up. Take your spindle assembly and your knuckle, swing it around, and pop your tie rod end in. Give it a couple whacks just to try to seat it better and then look for your castle nut. Thread that on there with what little thread you have available. If you have any available, I might need to pull this out a little bit. That way it lines up a little bit better. not wanting to grab <sighs> these are brand new so they're really stiff jeez sort of apply some pressure to it and then the sand k35 use a 19 mil nut and it just popped right off <clears throat> so I might be able to use my knees to lift up spindle a little bit I just got to get that angle might be able to use old castle nut I might be able to get that to thread on to at least pull 
the tie rod end through. There we go, all right. For that one, I did have to use the crescent wrench, so I'm just gonna do this to get it pulled through until I can get the, the actual castle nut on there, the new one. As you're tightening this up, you're creating that press fit. All right, so I can probably back that off now. And yep, I should have enough thread engagement for the new castle nut. So I'll go ahead and thread that one on there. I can use my 19 mil. And you can probably see it's pulling that tie rod up seating itself into the uh, into the new um, knuckle There we go, it's starting to get tight. All right, that is pretty tight. I'll just, you can grab the spindle, sort of brace yourself as you tighten it down. Should be tight enough. I think I can go a little bit tighter. <clears throat> there we go, that should be good. All right, and then take your new cotter pin. below it but slide your cotter pin through Slight nudge. There we go. So I slide the cutter pin through the back side. And then, uh, 
and then just bend your cotter pin in place. Easier from below. Yeah, there we go. Might not be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm just bending that cotter pin back to lock the nut in place. It's probably an easier way to do this, but this is the way I'm doing it. There we go. That should be good. Let me just swap out my battery on the camera real quick because right now we are at 6%. Alright, battery is swapped out. So, right back to it. Now we're looking for that 21 millimeter socket. There we go. So, 21 millimeter. Got the tie rod end done. Got that cotter pin in place. Now we can just. Oh, wait, nope, new ones, new ball joint nuts are also 19 mil. Yep. So we'll just tighten this one up and then throw on the cotter pin and then we'll pretty much be done other than just verifying everything's snug. And these, oh, these go on there pretty damn tight. So I'm gonna just make it easier on myself and use my foot. bit more if you have an impact use that I do not have an impact so I cannot use that all right that should be good and same thing, cotter pin. Let's go ahead and slip that bad boy through.
And do your cotter pin thing. There we go. So now, just make sure everything is snug. Take my breaker bar for this instead. So I need that uh, half inch adapter extension. And my 17 mil socket. Go ahead and snug those up. Or tighten them down, I should say. Yep, yeah, there we go. And then the other side or the other bolt <sighs> all right that's good all right so ball joint stone and cotter pin installed the two uh, knuckle bolts are good tie rod end is good all I need to do is snug up the uh, tie rod end locking nut for the adjustment and that was uh, 19 mil I believe There you have it. All done. That's tightened down. That's tightened down. Cotter pinned. Two steering knuckle bolts. Done. Lower ball joint. Nut and cotter pin installed. And there you go. That's everything. So. Old tie rod end. Very bad. Got some axial play. And it's just, I mean, it's just loose and gritty. It's no grease anymore. All the grease is gone. So that's trash, obviously. And then uh, the old lower ball joint. Not bad, but especially on GS300s and SCs, these are a, uh, well, SCs aren't removable, but um, these are a ticking time bomb. bomb. <laughs> so, you know, get those replaced as soon as you get one of these high mileage GSs. This one is uh, approaching 300,000 miles, so better safe than sorry. But um, yeah, that covers that. Covers that. <laughs>